Well, good morning, everybody. Um, hey, I thought I would do a quick live feed today to walk you guys around the construction site here at the store and show you what's been going on. All that uh, hard work of buying and selling, <laughs> this is where all the money's been going here, is getting this building put up. Uh, and then I'll do a little walkabout in the store before I open, so I figure I got about 20, 25 minutes to do a live chat with you guys. Um, so here we go. Without further ado, let's have a look at something more interesting, and that's the building in front of me. Oh, and I see my wife, Melissa's on. I will try and uh, say hello to everybody as I'm talking here, too. Melissa will likely uh, answer a few things along the way. So, this is what's shaking today. I'm going to step back so you can see. Front of the store. Shiplap is on, on the front. Wiring is complete and ready for my gooseneck lamps. You know what a gooseneck lamp is. It comes down and has a little kind of shade on it. I asked them, why haven't they been able to do the ship lap in this series? It looks like it's pretty much ready to go. They said they need to put this little uh, drip edge, the flashing along the bottom, and they can't do that until the do door is in. So they're waiting for the door to come in, uh, and then once that's done, then they can get the uh, ship lap done on the outside here. I, I say right now, it looks like a, a Wild West, <laughs> like a Clint Eastwood should walk out of that building right now. But, I mean, this is a 1910 sort of looking structure, so it definitely has that Wild West kind of look. Today was kind of um, fun in the sense that the drywall and insulation arrived. Now... That's a lot of drywall and a lot of insulation because uh, for fire codes, they've asked me to put double the thickness on the walls, which means this place is going to be probably very soundproof, I would think, and uh, hopefully very uh, warm and in summer and or very warm in winter and cool in summer. The other day, the electrician came in and look, he got all the stuff ready for the switches. We're waiting for the inspector to come through. <laughs> don't worry it's not hooked up yet it's not it's not wired into my breaker panel right now it's just a bunch of uh loose wires but they've got everything strung uh and i was asking you know what's with all these little sort of pocket lights he said well that's emergency exit lighting i said well i'm gonna be in pretty good shape around here if this building ever does lose its power it's gonna be almost as well lit with all these emergency lights, but it's going to be a safe building. We've got smoke alarm hardwired in. Plumbing is pretty much all in. The only thing that the guy didn't do is he didn't run the plumbing to that wall to the front because I do need to have a hose bib on the very front so I can water my flowers. And if we ever need water up front, it'd be nice to have. These little flowers are getting so dry out here. We have... Uh, daylilies. I, I'm, I don't know, it's just me maybe, but I like um, perennials versus annuals. So I try and plant a lot of perennials. All my plugs, this is where my coolers are going to go for drinks and food and stuff that needs to be cold or frozen. Then my counter right here, my beautiful antique lamps are going to be hanging pendant style, three in a row from the top there. Probably the biggest thing that's changed is the, um, the electrical and the plumbing and stuff is really starting to take shape inside. We've got our stack going up. They have to build a little box around that. Oops. Sorry, guys. If we do cut out a couple times here, it'll probably turn into a commercial <laughs> for people watching this later. But look, I have... Um... Okay. I think we froze up a little bit. Maybe I can't, I can't wander as far as I'd like to wander. Okay. I'm going to flip this back around so you guys can see. It is pretty big in here. 12 foot ceilings. And it looks a lot bigger in here than it is. I mean, you could really only park. <laughs> I always think of things in terms of how many cars you could fit in there. Somebody says you could pull a car in here. You could. I could probably park four or five cars in here. Um, and a big part of me thought, heck. Maybe I should just leave it a garage, but no, that's not going to happen. Um, the colors, Mary asks, what are the color schemes going to be? Same tiles that we had at the Potter's house in the bathroom, that black and wild sort of uh, black and white mosaic on the floor with off white walls, likely off white ceilings. So, very kind of, you know, stark in contrast. We've, we're going to have some antique wooden fixtures. 
So it'll feel very old and sort of uh, Mediterranean or Moroccan in here is the idea. Uh, I'm kind of going after like a European cafe sort of vibe is what the, uh, the vibe is. But I was going to show you guys that I have a breaker panel back there now, but I lost the live feed. Maybe, maybe there's a dead spot back there. Uh, let's see. Melissa, is there a question I need to answer? I'm just trying to read comments as we go here too. And I'm climbing my way over top of my old motorcycle, which I put in front of the side door for now because frankly, I don't have anywhere else to put it. There's the bike my dad and I fixed up. 1963 Honda Superhawk. Elvis Presley rode one in a movie called Roustabout. And throughout that movie, he was just consistently falling off the thing. <laughs> he was moody and he would just ride and then fall off. Anyway, I'm going to work my way into the back and show you guys some of those cool dioramas. I have to open it a bit here, so got to get some lights turned on. There we go. Some of the stuff was just so cool. And I know I showed this on the video before. You know, the little, uh, the gypsy caravan, and that's real wood. Just the detail is amazing, but this was kind of cute. Tiny little tarot cards. The guy turned into a were werewolf. What's going on? <laughs> you should have tipped me for that tarot card reading. No! Ah, he's a werewolf. I don't know which one my favorite is, though. Um, my friend Greg took some really great pictures of this stuff where it actually looked like it was a movie set. I don't know if you can see. I'm going to compare the size of my hand. These figures are, I think they're, they're not quite 12 inch. I think it's one six scale or close to that anyway. But, um, yeah, just all the, look at the details on this stuff. All the little, um, potions and bottles and... They even went as far as to put writing on all the bottles, too, in his little laboratory. And he's been up to something. There he is. Frankenstein's been up to something, putting together a monster there. And he's going to flip some switches. But I just, I thought the detail was just amazing. Do these move? No. I'm not going to try and force it. But it looks like it would work. And there he is. <laughs> no, no. Settle down, boy. <laughs> I see a girl. No, no, she's not quite ready yet, my friend. And she's like, what's happening? They didn't go all out for the makeup when they did Bride of Frankenstein, did they? They just dyed the lady's hair white on both sides like a lightning bolt. <laughs> that was the extent of what they did. But um, yeah, these uh, little dioramas are just so much fun. This is the Egyptian diorama, and Greg had a picture from right around here, I think. And it was cool because it had the shadow of the guy and I don't know, it was just so much fun. Greg, if you don't remember, is my friend who uh, sold me some typewriters and, and antiques in his basement the other day. This fellow's having a bad day. He is just on his way to work and, you know, looking for stuff. An antique dealer, likely, trying to rob a tomb. And this guy's having none of it right there. But I like the um, what they did with the torch, and Melissa pointed this out when she was in. She said they used kind of like cotton fluff, and they dyed it red and kind of went into white and had the, the black on the top for smoke, so it looks like it's a, a flaming torch. That's very creative. That guy's having a bad day. This guy had a worse day. I can tell you that much. So bad things are happening in Egypt right now. The camels, they're just like... <laughs> they're happy that they're out here being camels and not inside. But look at this. The, the idea is, I'll see if I can, I can bring you guys through. You're in the desert. They dig a tunnel through the side of the hill. And where does it go? Into the mummy's lair. Right inside. I thought that was so neat. Just the, the detail is just so remarkable. It looks like you're actually... Like if I took a picture from the right angle, it would look like this is a, a real photograph. Because these... Uh, the plaster walls or the the relief walls and the paintings are just so darn good. <laughs> anyway, there's Dracula and his date. And all kinds of stuff going on over here. Mm. I wonder what the... I was watching... Uh, um, what was I watching? Uh, oh, what's the Nicolas Cage movie? Hang on. This is going to drive me crazy now. Nicholas Cage, Ghost Rider. I was watching Ghost Rider. And they had the worst... I'm sorry, if you're a fan of Ghost Rider, they had the worst lines in that movie. Hey, dirtbag. As he's like, you know, throwing stuff at him or whatever. Like, they actually wrote that stuff in a movie. And uh, I was thinking when I was looking at this, 
I was joking last time, like, excuse me, ma'am, you've got some makeup smeared on your face. And she's like, there. And um, if you had to have a tagline or something, if you had to write a script, this guy would be, I think he'd be saying, did someone order steak for breakfast? As he impales the vampire. Cool stuff. A little creepy. Some people are like, this is terrifying. I don't even find all this, like Quasimodo and stuff. I don't find this terrifying. You know, it's just stuff. Um, monster movies, we've all seen Creature from the Black Lagoon. And these are all sideshow figures, which if I had the boxes for them, would be quite collectible. But, uh, yeah, it's just been uh, a lot of work. This is why Jason and I cut these shelves down the other day so all this stuff would fit on top. I'm glad that we did. We probably could have made them a little bit taller, I guess, but it's at a good viewing level right now. So I've got all these monster models and kits and King Kong just hanging out, scratching his head. I felt like that on some days, sitting in an easy chair, scratching the top of my head, looking like a monkey, I'm sure. Oh, this is the mole men or the mole people. They're just busy working away. Looks scary to us, but for them, that's just a regular day in Moleville. <laughs> oh, I have to try and figure out what else I can take down to that auction because it's kind of monster-based and monster theme. We have an old barber chair. We're going to run through that sale. Um, and a lot of monster figures that we had uh, from, from this last sale. Uh, I might take some more of these guys down because it's probably the time to do it is when you're doing a big monster sale. So I did... I don't know. Hellboy and Evil Dead. I don't watch a lot of horror movies, but those are ones I don't mind. And Evil Dead especially, because the, the humor in it was pretty funny. There's Ash in his S-Smart. Thank you for shopping, S-Smart. The actor, I can't remember the guy's name who played uh, Ash in Evil Dead. He made that movie himself out of film school, and it became a hit, but he never really did much else either than that. And there's his uh, knight's hand. And of course, you know, you get the variations. There's the evil version of him. And I think this one, uh, no, he doesn't have a chainsaw hand yet. But there is one where he's got the chainsaw for a hand. Anyway, the detail is really, really remarkable. Like, I don't know what's going on here. Nothing good. But uh, Halloween is just around the corner. So I'm sure we'll probably get some folks uh, interested in that. In the, oh, somebody said no Supernatural. No, no Supernatural stuff. But there was a lot of Buffy stuff over at the sale, which I guess there's a lot of interest in still. Uh, Boomstick, yeah. <laughs> Bruce, yeah, what was his name? Bruce, somebody said, uh, I can't remember. Yeah, Evil Dead was the scariest movie I ever watched. Tammy said, I introduced my sister Heather to Evil Dead. She was not a big fan because looking back now, it's really cheesy. It was really cheesy then, but yeah. There's Phantom of the Opera. Listen to the music of... She's like, I hate operas. He's like, listen, lady. <laughs> People assume that she's terrified from his look. She just really doesn't like musicals. Um, I thought we were here on a date. I really can't do musicals. So I'm going to get back in my little boat here and shimmy on down the creek. No, but wait. I've got some soft cheese, some camembert and wine I'm going to bring out. She's like, no, no, no. I'm good. I'm good. This is why I can't write monster movies. I should do what Woody Allen did in uh, What's Up Tiger Lily and dub in my version of a script on top of a, of a horror film. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, but this is a dilemma right here. I have all my paintings and art that were hanging on the walls as they were are kind of piled up around the store. And I've got some really good modern art. This is um, uh, <laughs> some special stuff that I'm planning on putting in the new location. But that drywall has to go up first. So there's a fair bit of stuff that has to happen before. But if you were to come through my store, you'd see things like, you know, ships with real copper bottoms and uh, big speedboats from the 50s. And of course, all the monster stuff and old books, pinball machines, motorcycles, really cool artwork all around. Oh, there's a jukebox. I want to fix this up. What do you guys think? Should I put this in the, in the new location? Oh, Patricia George says, got to find someone to model. Alexander so he can get pics of himself in these scenes before he sells them. <laughs> yeah, like a little version of myself. No, I'm good. I do like if I do like old advertising stuff like the signs and the pumps and I'm darn near sold out of it right now. So I need to get some more in the near future here because I do have customers looking for it, but I haven't been super great at uh, sourcing it in the last little while. Oh, this is that piece I was talking about the other day. 
this, uh, when I was on the, uh, I was a guest on another show and they said, what are some neat things that you found? This Bismarck, it's a model of the Bismarck and you say, yeah, it's a little hand built model of the Bismarck. But what's cool about it is it was made by a survivor of the Bismarck who made it while he was interned at a POW camp during World War II here in Canada. And yes, they did transfer the, the prisoners from the UK to Canada. Um, and yeah, so the guy went to all the effort to make himself a tiny little Bismarck while he was in prison from the Second World War. Um, <laughs> so I, I was singing the, you gotta sink the Bismarck. Yes, the world depends on us. Hit the decks are running, boys, and spin those guns around. <laughs> anyway, the, uh, the Bismarck, of course, by Johnny Horton, immortalized there. I just thought it was a really cool thing. There are some things... When I get them in, they're just really, really cool. And I'm not totally eager. Like this 1800s uh, horse race gambling game, you would have taken that as a portable unit with the, with the lid and everything, the Cubist chess sets. There's stuff that I think is just really cool and I'm not overly eager to sell them because I know that I'll probably have a hard time replacing it. Oh, here's Zoltar, I should, I should get him turned on. This is the big Batmobile my friend Kelly built. It's one quarter scale built off of a salesman sample boat. And he spent, I think he said a year and a half or something, sourcing all the little bits and pieces and putting it all together to look like the bat boat. And uh, what's Robin doing? What else would a teenager be doing? He's reading his uh, a comic book about his favorite hero, Batman. Gee willikers, Batman, you're pretty awesome. I know, Robin, I know. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna get the lights turned on in here. I have too much fun at work. Look, nobody else is even around and I'm just messing around and having fun here. I've got all my lights on switches to make my life easier. Does Zoltar work? Oh, sure, Zoltar works. I'll do, uh, I will get a, uh, a bit of change here as I, as I point this randomly at other objects while I'm, uh, I'm trying to find, there we go, magic coin to get my fortune from Zoltar today. Zoltar, he's, on, he's kind of on a timer and occasionally he goes off and he goes, hello, come see Zoltar, give me some money basically, he hustles. He needs more coin, look at that, he's like Scrooge McDuck with all that gold stacks all, all around him. Okay, let's see, in it goes. You may have heard this, but Zoltar is here to tell you you can believe it. Age is simply a matter of mind. If you don't mind, then my friend, it doesn't matter. So go on, be carefree like a little baby. But first, give Zoltar a little money and I will give you a fortune. I already gave you money, okay, here we go. What does Zoltar say today? Round and round the ball will spin till it draws your good luck in. Ah, I can foretell for you good luck in a month or two. Well, that would be good. The Crystal Gazer has wonderful things in store for you. A dear one will return from a long trip and your whole life will be different. Hey, Heather, Heather is planning a visit in a month or two. Woo, woo, um, You have a patient disposition and your patience is about to be rewarded. Well, let's hope I can sell the, the Potter's House would be nice. Despair not, I say, for your days of despair will soon be over. Your calm spirit and your good sense will see you through all emergencies. You have many friends, particularly in the armed forces. They're loyal to you. Are they, are they recommending that I form a militia um, and are glad of an opportunity to be of service to you? What? <laughs> okay, that's, that's random. It sounds like Zoltar is telling me to start my own army. <laughs> this is why you can't take these things literally. He is right about Heather coming to visit, so he is accurate about that. Many friends in the armed force. Well, Heather lives in Colorado. That's a big army town. Maybe all of Heather's friends are going to just like uh, get her over here some way. Uh, <laughs> Swirling Sand said, we are in the armed forces. Yes, yeah, I said, you have a, an, an army of people who are behind you, and maybe that's what you guys are. But um, Zoltar, you nailed it with the Heather thing before. But I guess that's... Uh... Oh, he was right about Heather once before, too. I guess that's the second time he's been right. He's only good at predicting, predicting Heather, <laughs> what Heather's up to. So he's somehow linked to Heather. Uh, but guys, it looks like... I have customers at the door. One of our uh, YouTube subscribers is at the door. She's missing the live feed right now. Um, and she's coming in to see me today. So I'm gonna get off.
the live feed so I can go and help out my live customers here. But you guys have a wonderful day. Um, hope you liked a little bit of the tour we did earlier on, and we will see you guys all soon. Bye for now, everybody.